How do folks? This here is the old mountain man I'm talking at you from the back side of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas. And it looks like my old hammy hound dog here's heard me a talking and here he come a running. <laughs> he knows it's gonna be a cooking video. As I said last night, early this morning on that video where I'd bagged that raccoon. And soon after that, I bagged a rabbit. I said, where's that rabbit at? Yep, oh, oh. Got the rabbit all clean, dressed out. Got him in this old bag right here, and he's a big old buster bunny. Big old cottontail. And here in this little, this little Ziploc bag, we got the raccoon liver and heart. You know, you always gotta have something to kinda Cull back at or knock back at hunger whenever you're whenever you're waiting on the main dish to get done well this is about half ass ready to get in the pot I've still got to remove the this the hide and the feet and then cut it up so I'm gonna be doing that out of sight down here you know, for a big old raccoon, that daggum thing has sure got a skimpy ass tail. Well, oh, hell, that other one. Of course, I, I think this is kind of a young one. That other one, had a, it was a great big old thing. He was probably about that dang long stretched out on the carport there. And this one ain't quite so big. I, I think he's something like maybe two years old, something like that. But still... That's old enough to have yourself quite a few smarts if you're a raccoon. You live that long out in the woods. Yeah. As a raccoon, them critters, they are sly. And it don't hurt no mountain man none to have a little coon meat in his belly. Might might give me some of that that, that manual dexterity that them raccoons have got. Of course you know that the Native Americans believe that if you you kill and eat an animal, you gain its strength and its its skills and it's what they call medicine. You get the animal's medicine. And it's just one of those things that goes along with many, many, many beliefs or belief systems. Oh I think I, I mentioned that in that uh, pan-fried copperhead coffee with the mountain man video. And I said, yeah, I'm going to get me some, some copperhead medicine. Yeah. And the little bear, he's standing over there wagging his tail and he got his ears perked up. See me cutting on this raccoon. Of course, he ain't going to eat nothing raw. Everybody knows that. Yeah. They get cutting around them. Cut around that joint there. Cut that Achilles tendon. Yeah. Get up under there. Get right in that joint. Oh, buddy. Yeah, maybe I should have done this before I started shooting video, I don't know. If it gets too awful dang laborsome, then by golly, I'll just go ahead and pause the video and do it that way. Ah. Yeah, hind foot number one. Yeah, I've seen people take these take these feet like this and have them taxidermied with the toes spread and they'd have a, a string put up there in a runoff of it or a, a, a ball chain like what dog tags go on and then they'd use it as a pull cord for a, a light bulb and the old, the old pull switches and you walk into a room grab a cord and Pull it and the light comes on. It's a yeah. I, 
That would be good, but I just don't feel like paying somebody to do that. Yeah. Oh. I'll tell you, cutting the feet off a raccoon is daggum a heck of a lot more difficult than cutting off, cutting them off of a damn squirrel or a rabbit. Now I told the the uh, the moody prepper that I was gonna do this video and. SHTF cooking outside video. Yeah, <laughs> SHTF. Let's see here. We got taters and onions, a glass of coffee pot full of water, all the modern conveniences. <laughs> Yeehaw. Ain't that something? Yeah. We got some new neighbors over the way, over across the way there. They hear me a talking. It's like, who in the hell is he talking to, and who in the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Joint broke. Ah, right there. All right. Hind foot number two. Yeah. Now for the front paws. It's a mess. You gonna help me with this, huh? You gonna help me with this? No. <laughs> you ain't gonna help, are you? You silly. Oh, well, yesterday it was a, a hell of a day. There's a, a neighbor over yonder. A, the house burnt. Heard all kinds of sirens and everything, and. I, I walked out to the paved road out here and I looked over that direction. I seen all that smoke. I knew what it was and Bill's wife come outside and she seen me out there and told me, confirmed what I'd already knew just by looking around that some people's houses, that house had burned. And thank God everybody got out safe. But now all their all their belongings and everything is gone. Up in smoke. Clothes, food, everything. All of it. Yeah. And a lot of people say, well, people can replace things. Well, sure they can, but poor folks going to have one hell of a damn hard time replacing everything. Here it is, winter time. And you know, food, clothing, everything. I mean, when you lose absolutely everything, it's a hell of a damn thing to have happen to you. Especially in the damn winter time like that. Lord of mercy. Yeah, now there's four paw number two. That's all four feet. <coughs> I reckon I better, uh, better get that tail. What are you doing, little boy? Huh? What are you doing? Huh? You want? Huh? You want that? <laughs> he gave me a toy for a minute. <laughs> there, man. Hey. He'll, he'll take it over there and he'll play with it for a little bit. It'll be a little distraction for him. He's about like a 10 year old kid with a new toy. He'll play with it for a minute or two and lose, yeah, it'll lose its fascination. Yeah. That's right. Jeff Turlington, 
I'm using that spider cold knife you sent me. I use this thing all the time. Now I did use the case trapper on the initial gutting and beheading of the animal. The one that uh, Brian Rowe sent me. I, yeah, I still can't figure out why in the world he he just decided he didn't want to have anything to do with me for some damn reason or another. Yeah, I think he retired and became a mu he retired from the emergency first responder business and he became a musician. I don't know. I don't know why in the heck I done put that up, put that knife up. I still got work to do. <laughs> Whoop there. What are you doing, Wolf? Oh, there is a lot of good fat on that raccoon. Raccoon hide. Yes, there is. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'd put that bugger in the freezer. Let's see here. Set this thing up here. Where it's easier to work with, you know? that lean meat now that fat that's important that right there is complex carbohydrates and oh boy and there ain't nothing better than, than deep fried corn meal cornbread you get like in that movie uh, the hell was that Rooster Cogburn with John Wayne not that one with that Bridges fella of course, that was a good movie, too. Old John Wayne, though, he had him a, a big old bag of what he called corn dodgers. Balls of uh, cornbread, hot uh, cornbread uh, fried and a big ladle of coon meat grease. And by golly, I've cooked them up before. Kind of like real big hush puppies. And they are good. So I'm going to be holding on to this hide and fleshing out that fat. That little that damn plastic sack that I had that raccoon laying on. Oh yeah, I'm going to flesh that. Flesh that hide out. Get that fat off of there and keep it. Render it down. Scrape that fat off that hide. It won't hurt nothing to have some of that fat in the in the stew. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. I'm gonna be having stewed raccoon uh, and with onions and potatoes, Mrs. Dash seasoning, some Epsom salt. I don't need anybody mouthing around, belly aching and whining, trying to tell me some bullshit about having some salt being having glass in it or some other silly bullshit. I've done, yeah. I heard about that once in hell. I've done experiment after experiment trying to see if there was any damn glass in Epsom salts and that's just you know Mo no not Epsom but Morton salt Morton table salt in that blue box yeah there's too many things out there in in the world that people want to try to pick apart and create some damn crazy idea there's something wrong with it yeah. I do know for a fact that GMOs exist we all know that the damn Monsanto corporations trying to corner the market on all the seeds so they can do nothing but have control of all the food because hell you know, if you control the food, you control the people. But uh, can't control or regulate this kind of food. 
you know, damn way. <laughs> See, whenever Hank Williams Jr. made that song, Country Boy Can't Survive, he knows what he's talking about. Of course, at the time that that song was made, there wasn't no such thing as GMO fucking crap like that. Oh man, look at all of that fat. I mean, if, you, if people was sitting here with me, they could see that this hide is just encrusted with fat. Now, there's a lot of it, and it, that is some good, you know, whatever you use lard for, Wild animals fat can be used for the same. Yeah, buddy. This is a treat for me. I love me some raccoon meat. I got me one uh, last spring. He come out of hibernation. He had a completely empty belly. Big old raccoon. Man. He was a big one. Yeah, a big old raccoon. Didn't have no fat on him though, cause he was in hibernation. He, and with these warm spells coming about, the dang critters will come out of hibernation looking for something to eat. Yeah, and it's, and it's kind of hard on them. Because whenever they come out of hibernation during a warm spell, their their instincts are telling them that it's spring, and so they got to go right back. It's it's kind of stressful on them, you know, getting out looking for something to eat and then having to go right back into hibernation during after the next cold during the next cold snap. Stressful on the critter. It happens to every animal that hibernates. Well, that's got a sweet smell to it to me. It'd probably stink like ten kinds of hell to a, somebody that's a non-hunter and never had raccoon before. Oh, coon meat. Yeehaw. Yeah. Well, it's slow going, but it's progress, not perfection. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, we got 18, 19 minutes. This is going to be a long video. Piddling around here, pushing and a pulling. So I'm gonna go ahead get the knife out here, put some tension on that hide. Put some tension on that hide. Yeah, well, I can see where the the number four buckshot ripped through that hide. Yeah, it won't be worth keeping for making anything out of, but it'll be worth keeping just for the the fat content, like the fat that I can scrape off of. Oh yeah, look at that. layers and layers of nice, nice fat to cook with. Oh boy, that is nice. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. I like that. Mm. 
Why hair? Some blue jays over there, and I hear old crafty crow a, a calling. He got crows eyeballing that that gut pile from that coon. Yeah, they'll be around. Well, those crows, they like to clean up the pickings, leavings. They like to clean up the leavings. Yeah, I'm going to leave some of that fat on there. There's lean meat. Separate that. Make sure that don't stay on the hide. I bet this old bugger's been coming up here feeding on some feeding on some uh, dog food off and on and eating the scraps and such that he could get every now and again. Big old Rocky Raccoon. Welcome to my camp, Mr. Raccoon. Welcome to my camp. Right. I cured all your worries, didn't I, boy? That's right. You don't have to worry about food or water or nothing now, do you? That's right. Yeah. shot for him. Of course, I already did. It was about 9, I told him it was 9, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time when uh, when I was setting up for the video. You know, I like to keep people informed about certain things, you know. It's like whenever I'm making up a fire steel order for somebody and they get in touch with me you know just checking in I'll send them pictures of the fire steels and I'll send them all kinds of stuff now that moody prepper would like to have a mountain man fire steel by golly I'll make you one up yeah buddy I'll do it pro bono. Uh, just because. Just because. Boy, look at all that nice fat. There's going to be a lot of them. Well, that's going to be a nice broth. That's going to be a nice, nice broth. Shooting a video. Finishing up skinning the coon. The Rocky Raccoon. <laughs> yeah, that's the. Uh, yeah. That other video I shot, I renamed it. <laughs> I do that a lot. I don't like, I think it's something better for a video title and I'll go back and edit it. Ugh. Got 
turned tomb blood all over my knee. And yeah, you can see that. See the difference? And the, these britches are brown. These Dickies work jeans. Ah oh, man, these are some. These are my new favorite jeans. You know, to hell with the Wranglers made in Bangladesh. You know, when the Wrangler company starts making their jeans in America again of quality denim, then by God, I'll start buying them again and wearing them again. But until then, it's going to be Dickies. It's got a funny name, but by God, they are some damn good clothes. And the hell with all this bullshit having a damn pair of jeans wear out in a year's time. Nonsense. I remember when a pair of Wrangler jeans lasted you ten years. You took good enough care of them. Kept them clean, kept them washed. Then go climbing around on the damn barbed wire fences. When I was a kid, I did a lot of fence riding. There. Crossing barbed wire fences. Let's see. There's that damn bag. I'll just let it hide over here. Hair down so it don't get no leaves on the, that fatty side. Yeah. See him. Devil patch of hide cut off. Yeah, that's got some good fat on it. There'd be some people wondering if I'm gonna cut the kernels out of this out of this animal and no. Because there ain't no damn use in me spending another half an hour looking for something the size of a tiny little bean. Yeah, and them, them kernels and them glands are all in this animal. They're all around the neck, up under the front legs, around the back legs. They're, they're every goddamn where. And I am not going to fuck around with that bullshit. You know, cut them, them glands out of there, because it ain't going to make a damn bit of difference. Now, look at there. Look at all that. You can see the difference in the lean meat and the fat. Well, that fat, I could, I could cut that off of there and render that down for cooking. Fry eggs with it, fry potatoes and onions. And this is going to go in the stew. And I shot him a number four buck. And I see right there, there's a hole. His, his dang head had just shot two pieces. But there wasn't very many pellets hit the body. But there's 27 pellets of number four buck which is you know about the diameter of a uh, old 22 projectile maybe a little thicker a little bit a little bit more girth a little bit more diameter now what i'm going to do is cut him up like a chicken get them legs separated now, the first time I had had coon meat was in a place called Beach Grove, Arkansas. A 16-year-old and me and three boys around my age. One of them was a little older. Got away, dog! Damn you! you used to jump around like a Got a damn nervous cat. I hate cats. The only good use for cats is pest control and emergency food. Alright, first leg going in the pot. Anyway, me and these other two boys 
there were three boys. As let's see, there was Ronnie, Ronnie Connery, and there was two twins, Tim and Jim. They was uh, will you get the hell over and lay down? And quit smacking your damn jaws around like you. Yeah. Aggravating. Distracting. Anyway, Ronnie Connery, and there was uh, Tim and Jim, two twins. They wasn't exactly identical twins, more like just paternal twins. Born one after the other, and uh, yeah, yeah. We'd uh, we'd been out hunting. We went hunting along this this creek, and. We were out there, we were running this old dog named Speck, and he was a top-notch hunting dog. He'd tree them. He'd, tree, he'd run rabbits out of the scrub brush. He'd, he'd do all kind of good stuff for us while we was hunting. He'd flush out game from all over. Little bear, go lay down somewhere now. Don't know where I lay down. Being a pain in the butt. <coughs> but uh, I bet we got 30, 33, 34 squirrel that day, 18 rabbits, and we got, uh, dang winds are picking up mighty stiff, kind of bouncing the, the lid on the, uh, on the laptop and watching these trees how they're bending around. Anyway, well me and Tim and Jim and Ronnie we was all out there hunting along this creek out behind the house. Soybean fields or open fields on both sides. They just out there hunting squirrels and rabbits. Oh man, we happened upon this big old crow nest noticed something was up there in that damn nest. Seen something was up in there. And Ronnie told Jim, fire up in there that 20 gauge shotgun. And of course we all had 20 gauge shotguns. Shoot up in there and see what that is, Jim. I swear, one of the biggest damn coons I ever seen come tumbling out of that damn that damn nest. And Ronnie said, "Oh damn, you did it now." He said, "Well, you told me to." <laughs> uh, he said, "It ain't coon season." It was in the middle of summer. With a, oh man. Anyway, we. Hell. Yeah, now I got the trunk of the body. Got the legs cut off. There's the trunk of the body there. Seeing little bits and pieces here and there that need to be cut out. Yeah, that happens. Got in a bit of a hurry to get that thing gutted last night. On account of the rigor mortis was setting in, I had to get him in the freezer. Put him in a big lawn and leaf bag. Anyway, let's see here. Got to break that spine. Mm. Oh, damn. Yeah, get in between them vertebrae.
go. Yep. Yeah, buddy. There might not be much room for taters and onions in there. Cause that is a big damn too. Ugh. I mean, look at there. There just ain't a whole lot of room for much else. So I'm gonna try. But getting back to the story. Since it was not coon season and we was out there, we had open soybean fields on both sides. On both sides of us and we didn't know whether or not there was a game warden out there. Glassing out there with his binocs. Seeing, you know, what said was what since we were out there shooting a hell of a lot of rabbits, a hell of a lot of squirrels. He, and they tend to, them old game wardens, they'll sit back and they sneaky. They sneaky motherfuckers. Yeah. So we told Jim, or Ronnie told Jim, so you take that coo and you get your ass down in that damn creek bed. That creek, it, it had steep banks on it all the way back to the house, pretty much. And there was thick cover in the places where the, the bank run shallow. <coughs> I'm gonna put this back there on that big grill. As soon as I get a fire started. Alright then. Uh, so Jim, he got down there. He got down there in that damn creek bed. He carried that big old coon back. I bet he would. He must have. He must have went a good 13, 14 pounds. One of the biggest damn critters I'd seen in Arkansas. Listen, here's got some meat on it. I bet there's a good two, three. Four pound of meat there. Well, I gotta get my get my hands clean a little bit. Kind of get that coon fat off there so that I can roll me a cigarette. I need a smoke. All right. Uh, well, Jim, he made it back to the house with us, and we kept an eye on him. Made sure he didn't have no problem with cottonmouth water moccasins and such. And that's one thing he was scared to death of. Jim was scared to death of a damn cotton mouth. And for him to have to wade through pools of water in that damn creek, well, it just worried him half to death. Wasn't scared, he just worried about it a little. And he said, well, I told him, don't worry, Jim. I said, damn, a damn snake comes out of that, y'all. I'll fall down on him with this 22 and I'll cut him to pieces. Had a, had a good 22. So I'll get him. Anyway, well, we, we got to, uh, got back to the house. Got the rabbits and the squirrels and everything skinned and clean. And, you know, since it was summertime, Ronnie, he figured that the, that the coon wasn't worth eating. So we are just going to cook it up for for uh, dog food, for speck. So we cut it up, put it in a kettle, put it on the fire, put it on the on the wood stove. We got that, and he was a big old boar coon, big old outfit. Uh, where's that damn water? There it is. Oh, Lord. Oh. Got that animal cut up. Got him put in the... Put on the pot, put on the wood stove, and then we went and run spec for another. Oh, that, that night we probably run spec right around three, four, five hours, just 
seeing one in the tree, we wasn't really hunting anything. Man, that dog was amazing. If it was good to eat, he'd tree it. He'd tree it or he'd run it, and then he'd he'd cut a wide swath around a deer and run it right back to you. Personally, I just think Ronnie was just wanting to, uh, Ronnie Conroy, he just wanted to show off and show what his dog would do. Of course, if I had a dog as good as Speck, by golly, I'd be wanting to show off too. Show that critter skills off as well, yeah. I would. Then we run that dog and we come on back to the house. And we was hungry, but it's a bit late for, you know, frying up anything or cooking up any squirrels or rabbits and making biscuits and gravy and such. I said, well, hell, that damn coon's been stewing for a while. And I figured Speck won't care if we share a little bit. Well, me and Tim, we stepped up to the cook pot. And Tim says, you go ahead and try it. If it's ain't good, I'll eat with you. So I fished around in there, I got me a hind leg, and I went to eat, and I said, it's good stuff, man, get you some. He said, really? I said, yeah, I ain't lying to you, I ain't lying, I'm nowhere just gnawing away on that hind leg. That meat just falling off a bone. You know, slow cooked real good for four or five hours. Meat falling off the bone is good. And Jim and Ronnie was standing over there slack-jawed, bug-eyed, and looking stupid. Is that really good? And I said, you damn right it's good. Get your ass off. If you got a hair on your ass, you'll get over here and you'll get some of this meat and eat it. If you're hungry, you're going to eat. It's good. There ain't no doubt about it. They just stood over there looking stupid. Me and, you know, me and Tim, hell, we ate. <laughs> we ate damn near that whole, that whole raccoon, damn near it. And Speck, well, of course, he got the bones, he got some of the meat, he got the rib cage, and, uh, the main part of the trunk, we ate the legs, and some of the meat off the trunk of the body. It was pretty dang good eating. Yeah, buddy. Now, I'm gonna warm me up some cold coffee. There we go. Now, I'm gonna pour some of this water in here. Well, I made sure to bring plenty of water. We got some of this garlic and herb salt free Mrs. Dash because I like to add my own damn salt. Let's see here. Yeah, I'll get about a, I don't know, a tablespoon of that Mrs. Dash and put it on that. Put it all right clean. And then Get about oh about a teaspoon of salt. Don't get an onion over here. Yeah, yeah it's got a green sprout growing out the top. That's how you can tell if it's non-GMO. If it's a non-GMO onion, it'll sprout. It'll sprout roots. It'll sprout a green top. If it's a GMO onion, it'll just sit in a damn refrigerator and shrivel up into nothing. It won't sprout, it won't do nothing. Cut up some onion. Put it in there. Yes, some onion! Yeah! There's a leg. Bon ton roulé. Laisse-le, bon ton roulé. 
Let the good times roll. Uh-huh. I guarantee. How you say that damn art? It's been so long since I've been to Louisiana. It ain't even funny. I need to get on back. Get on back to Louisiana and visit some relatives. Visit some of my relatives in Louisiana down Baton Rouge and New Orleans. And oh boy, when I could get that New Orleans bread pudding that right there was oh my god that was good i'd love to have some of that nolan's bread pudding i got over there at the, the uh, farmer's market to go with this here for dessert oh that'd be good i'm gonna put some of my onions down in the trunk of that critter stuff some of that onion down in there i'm gonna get it now the old Marine Vaughn, he said, what, whenever I made my survival meat video with the uh, the squirrel and all, all that cussing and insulting and everything, I had to, I had to uh, age restrict it, and besides, I didn't want some little kid seeing me skin Skippy Squirrel, you know, squirrel's been all cute and everything. Oh, I'm not unage restricted. And, See what the hell happens. <laughs> yeah, we cut up that red tater. Put that red tater in there. Cigarette don't went out. Yeah. All right, we can get another tater. Stuff some of that tater up in the trunk of that that animal. Put some over here. Put some over there. Get another one of them young red potatoes. They got sprouts coming out of them. I don't care. I'm gonna cook them all. I ain't gonna cut them all. I'm gonna cook it all. Chevy 4x4 might get a kick out of this one. This might be a two hour video. It might take half a day to upload. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Hello, little bear. All right, then. Ah, let's see. Here we go. Take a look at that. Get that up there on that camera. Real good. See y'all see that meat and them taters and onions and spices? Oh boy. And now, that lid, that three pound, that three pound lid. Sunny beaches, my damn coffee's a boiling. Add some more to it. I'm gonna cool that shit off. That's one of them damn Japanese beetles that looks like a ladybug. Got them things all over the place out here. Mm. Ah, coffee. Now, I 
right, let's see here. Raccoon liver and heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't forget the giblets. Toss it in the pot. Don't forget the giblets. Oh, that is a nice liver. That is nice. Yeah, there's not anything wrong with that liver. Nothing at all. There's a little pocket of fat there. And one of them old glands. Might as well toss that off. Get rid of it. Yeah. Now we're going to boil that. And boil that up. Not even going to season it. Just just boil it up right here on this on this little propane stove. That's right. We got this rabbit. I'm cooking up in that skillet back here that's propped up against that little bitty. That little big grill back there. Now, a little grill, that's one my brother gave me. That's a Bud Light grill. And there's a big old Weber back there. My buddy Bill, he gave that to me. He's going he's gonna to let the trash band haul it off. So I said, I could use that. You bet you, I'll use that in my cast iron cooking and coffee with the Mountain Man videos on YouTube. You bet you. That's right. Now, we got to make some fire. That's right. What? Wind just had to pick up. Just right then. I got some magnesium shaving. Magnesium dust. Oh, it damn wind. That shit. Ah. Take care of itself. Now, right a little back. Gonna move. Get some twigs, get some small branches, get some hickory bark. Oh, yeah. This is the way to do it.
Got them vents all opened up wide open. Gonna get that fire going in that in that little grill now. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Kinda. Hey, 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 you can't have no plastic in there. I really got to do some cleaning on this yard. Oh, well, I'll just take that. A damn magnesium. Catches right up. Let's see, how's that showing? Let's see there. There, that char cloth, uh, that bunch of char cloth dust. Yeah, and a ball of hot magnesium. <laughs> Magnesium powder. Magnesium dust. Need some more water in that liver and heart. Gotta get it covered. Ah. 
wanted me to blow on that, you know. Well, let that catch up. Let all that catch up real good. Yeah. Oh, got a cramp in my leg. That damn drawing cramp in my hip. That's a sign a man needs to get laid. Yeah. About time to get some pussy sometime in there. It's been almost a year. I reckon it's about time. About time to do her again. Well, hour and one minute and 45 seconds. I ain't even got the meat on the fire yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little bear, what are you doing? Huh? You act like a damn skittish little mouse or something, you silly part of head. Huh? What's the matter with you? Huh? What's the matter with you? You need to get some of that mean old boar coon meat right in your gut. That'll brace you up real good. That'll give you some, some courage or some meanness or some damn thing. I'm going to get that. Oh! I'm going to take that rabbit. Set the, I'm just going to set that shit right back here. Oh! And no, I'm not going to cook him in the bag in a skillet. I ain't that damn stupid. I'm just getting it all together and out of the way. I ain't stupid at all. Boy. Where did that fucking... Ugh. Well, hell. I done piddle farted around and let that damn... That damn big old trash bag get away from me. The one I throw that, that lawn and leaf bag I kept that damn raccoon in. I'm glad you finally got through going around in circles, tromping around them leaves, making noise, big old baby. Let that fire catch up. <coughs> Boy. About time to put a drawstring on my hat. I think March is going to try to come early this year. Yeah, there's some flames. There's some flames. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I swear, cooking up some coon and rabbit, coon liver and heart, yeah, I just hurt, hope a bird don't fly over and shit my damn food, you know, no lid on it, I can't find a lid for this little son of a bitch. But when they really messing with that bit of the audio on the video very much. That really pissed me off if it ruined it. Yeah, I told the Moody Prepper we gonna get some some cast iron cooking going over here. Oh boy. Uh. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah, little bird, you need to get up out of the way. Yeah, it seems like I keep disturbing you now, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I don't keep disturbing you, you keep laying in the damn way. Got a place that there was little pieces of wood there to where those flames would just barely even lick around at the bottom side of it. cast iron pot catching some heat now. Yeah, it is. sitting at an angle 
just a little bit. Kind of tilt it over the side. Once that wood gets burned down, it'll just set down even. Let's see here. I had a fork out here a while ago. Take that fork. I just use a damn knife. Turn that liver over. Make sure it's good and uniformly cooked. Yeah, I can see them flames in that little in the little grill over here. It's Flames is barely even percolating along, but it'll catch up. You can't rush it. Can't rush it. I guess I could. Oh. Let's see. Turns out the grill was sitting lopsided. Didn't have nothing to do with the wood in the grill. Well, that's just barely even boiling with all this damn wind. Yep, block that damn wind off and it just goes up boiling like hell. seconds so far. Yeah. Yeah. This. Rabbit. 
it out of this Ziploc. Big old cotton tail. Yeah. Oh, look at them legs. There's a Yeah, I shot that rabbit with that old Iron Johnson. Killed him graveyard dead with the first damn shot. That's all you need. Really what you want. Don't want that animal laying there suffering. That's bad medicine. Bad medicine. Yeah, I'm a laying there suffering. Can't have that. Yeah. It's got some fat on the inside. Got it. Old fat deposit there and there. Oh, look at there. There's a piece of lead shot. Ah, come on now. I can't, can't have that. There we go. Fire over there is catching up good. And that little grill. Yeah, buddy. Some of the best eating on earth. The best eating. Yeah. Come on now. There. blood shot through there where that rabbit took the major portion of that lead shot on that Remington Express number four. Yeah, buddy. Killed him dead. That wood over there caught up good oil, fat. Yeah. Got some of my coconut oil in there. And I got, uh, got some, uh, got some olive oil. I don't know what takes more heat, olive oil, or what withstands the heat, olive oil, or coconut oil. Don't know. Yeah. 
better get them damn leaves off of that. Off of that there. So we can harvest some of this, this fat off of there. That fat would cut off of that, it wasn't no good to me no more. I reckon I better either locate that damn fork or get me another one because I'm going to eat that damn liver in the heart. back I gotta give me another four. No there it is. Ah. Yeah. Found my fork on the ground there. There's no boy by the name of Black Swan sent this to me from from uh see it says here uh, Utica USA there's some kind, I don't know where the hell that is or what it's made at. It's made out of stainless, but made in the USA, that's the, that's a key thing. Let's see here, come here, you. That's right. There's that, there's that raccoon heart. It kind of cooked down some. Oh, boy, look at that steam rolling off of that bugger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a heart muscle, all right. <laughs> that liver. Yeah. Never expected liver to be crunchy. I really ain't never eat much coon liver. Young and you probably got you firm liver like that. This boil go good. That rabbit starting to cook. There's the steam rolling off of that. I'll bet. I'm going to be nice to the little bear. Give him some liver. You want some liver, little bear? Come here. Will you eat coon liver? Come here. Come on. Come around here. Huh? Hmm? Or oh, here. I'll put it on the ground for you. You gonna eat that? Come here. Come here. I'll take a bite. Hey, give me that bite. 
Hmm? Oh, you got damn. I swear. Sassy too. I see you. Sassy. 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 Sassy too. I see you want something to eat. Mm. Come get it. Come and get it. Oh, she's licking her chops. She might eat it. I don't know. It's cooked. Well. Ugh. Dogs. I swear. Dogs are just too spoiled. Try to be nice. Share some food. Neither one of them wants it. That's just messed up. Put it in deep freeze. I figured I'd render some fats so let that water cook away. Oh lordy. I should have done this as a live event instead of shooting it as a video. At least I could have had some interaction with some people in the chat. man idea. I go ahead and cut this off right here, upload it, and then shoot another one a little bit later when this food gets done. Me having some of it. Enjoying the fruit of my labor. Yeah, that 
three pound lid on that big old pot over there. That thing makes that that kettle about like a uh, about like a, a pressure cooker almost. What in the goddamn hell? Yeah, we got a damn terrorist. Little old single engine Cessna. Yeah, I hope you're happy, you motherfucker. Better look out, I got a 12 gauge and some goddamn slugs that'll cut holes in steel. And I'll cut you out of the damn sky like cutting holes in that motherfucking tire rim, you son of a bitch. Fucking tourist. There it comes again. It fly about a hundred feet above the treetops. Just gotta be a pain in the ass. And that is not commercial air traffic. That's just some fucking tourist. Some fucking some goddamn and aviation enthusiast out fucking off. Stand them damn things. Never can tell who's driving. Well, we got an hour and 33 minutes and 18 seconds. And that idea about me cutting this this video here off right here and then shooting another one after the food gets done of me enjoying the fruits of my labors. That sounds like a good idea. Especially with this damned airplane buzzing around. Well, folks. Uh, I was thinking about, you know, picking up the laptop, going over and lifting the lid. And Showing how that, that food's cooking up and coming along. Might be a good idea. I think I'll do that. Get the power cord unplugged. Oh, what in the hell was up with that glitchy fucking thing? Let's see here. We'll There it is. Well, it's just a cooking away. What y'all think about that? That looks like that might be might be done to a certain extent. Like I said, it's about like a that three pound lid on there. It's about like a pressure cooker. Almost it keeps that that steam in real good. But uh yeah. Oh Lord. Oh well, Moody Prepper, I hope y'all enjoy that you and Big Sexy enjoys this video. And, yeah. 
I'll put it in the in the title SHTF cast iron cooking and coffee with the mountain man for the moody prepper yeah or some damn thing like that I don't know me and my big old long ass titles <coughs> well I'll see y'all later see y'all on the next video uh, as I said before I'm gonna make another video here in a little bit of me enjoying the fruits of my labors and we'll see y'all later be good to yourselves be good to each other and oh goodness gracious for now this here is old mountain man signing off from the back side of this here lake wishing y'all all the best and hoping that uh, you can sharpen up your hunting skills and your fishing skills and trapping skills if you ain't got them learn them and practice them we'll talk with y'all later adios for now